by Anna, Ariana, Abigail, and Greta. Economy based on agriculture mass production, the economic system stretching between Chesapeake Bay and Brazil that produced crops, especially sugar, cotton, and tobacco. They were using slave labor on large estates. Mercantilism is the belief in the benefits of profitable trading, which is called commercialism. Government heavily regulates trade and commerce in hopes of increasing national wealth. Close government control of the economy finds ways to maximize exports and accumulates as much precious metals as possible to enable the state to defend its economic and political interests. The company formed for the exploitation of trade with East and Southeast Asia and India. The company started as a monopolistic trading body, and the company became involved in politics and acted as an agent of British imperialism in India from the early 18th century to the mid-19th century. After the mid-18th century, the cotton goods trade declined while tea became an important import from China. Beginning in the early 1620s, the East India Company began using slave labor in transporting enslaved people to its facilities in Southeast Asia and India. Great Britain took the dominant position of trade in Western Europe. It would send its ships to its colonies in North America and also to the West Indies, India, and Africa. They exported wooden textiles and imported mainly sugar and tobacco. In Africa, they would trade rum and manufactured goods for slaves to go back into the labor in sugar, tobacco, cotton, and rice plantations. This became known as triangular trade. Another thing that occurred was mercantilism, which was a belief in the benefits of profitable trading in which the government heavily regulated in hopes of increasing national wealth. In the 18th century, France carried on two types of trade with its New World colonies. One was the direct trade by which France sent wheat, wine, metal objects, and building materials to the New World in exchange for sugar and, to a lesser degree, cotton, cocoa, tobacco, and coffee. The other was the triangular slave trade, which the French referred to as the circuit trade. French ships loaded with trade goods sailed to Africa, where the goods were exchanged for slaves, and the slaves were then taken to France's New World colonies, where they were exchanged for sugar and other plantation products. After gaining independence from the Spanish, the Netherlands were able to create a vast trading empire. Through their Dutch East India Company, the country controlled the East Indies, now Indonesia, parts of the Caribbean, and South Africa. They controlled the majority of the spice trade and grew very wealthy. The Netherlands didn't have any say in the politics of Europe as it was a new country. However, as they became a trading superpower, their political influence grew. Another reason for the rapid expansion of the Netherlands power was that there was a small nobility that was politically weak. In other words, there was little of an aristocracy in the Netherlands to push uh, feudalism down the peasantry's throats. Ironically, New Amsterdam's prominent Dutch settlers would go on to become the aristocracy of New York, such as the Roosevelt's and Vanderbilt's. As the most successful economies in early modern Europe were Britain, France, and the Dutch Republic, these countries were idolized for their culture and thriving economy. How did these Western European powers set up a trade network, use slave labor and Asian goods to satisfy consumer demand in Britain, France, and the Netherlands? It really all comes down to mercantilism, where governments can control the security and prosperity of a state. However, with mercantilism and the demand for goods came imperialism. Western European economies depended on the importation of goods from Brit British colonies and the exportation of these goods all over the world were the root of prosperity in Western Europe. Simply put, the wealth of these European countries were sustained by commerce. However, the means of the commerce is often overlooked. The exploitation of slaves became steadfast during this time period. As a part of the triangular trade, slaves in the West Indies were exchanged for sugar, the most desirable product of the Americas. As demand for products grew, so did exploitation, trade regulations, and merc mercantilist governments. An economic system that seemed prosperous was in fact only supplying wealthy Europeans, while the lower classes, colonists, slaves, and colonized people paid the price. The outcome of Western Europe's thriving economy was greed, 
and this greed was the seat of crime, racism, violence, and rage for the 18th century and onwards.